Before Elden Ring ever came out, they had a network test where we all played the game uh, and we, we, we had invasions and co-op and they took random spells and weapons and armor sets and they just scattered them around in the very first area of the game, Limgrave. And they just let us, you know, go hog wild and, and stress test that network. Well, one of the spells that they had in that network test was uh, a, a bubble spell. And I used it and I made a little video about the network test and in the video I said oh these bubbles are so overpowered it was a little joke you know it wasn't it wasn't for real I said these Oracle bubbles they're so strong they're so overpowered that they're gonna break the game and since I did that we waited a little while the game finally came out and people have been yelling at me to use the bubbles on my frog build. The problem is, is that my frog build, you know, it's frog from Chrono Trigger, right? That's where this music comes from. Have you played Chrono Trigger yet? What's stopping you? Anyway, uh, my little frog build that I made, it, he doesn't have enough arcane to cast the bubbles. Even though uh, the frog hat, the albinoric mask that I'm wearing, uh, even though it gives you arcane, I didn't have enough to do it. And I was like, you know, I, I, I thought about playing around with it a little bit, and I just, it never seemed like it was worth it, right? And so what I decided I would do is just make a build that was good at the bubbles. And that's what I've done. So the last time I made a video, uh, we were playing around with a Faith Arcane build that had a little bit of strength. What you're seeing right here is an Int Arcane build that's going to have a little bit of Dex. Uh, it's currently, these invasions you're seeing here, these all take place around level 80. This is one of those builds I knew wasn't going to be good at level 60, so I didn't even bother doing invasions with it at level 60, like I typically do. I knew this thing was gonna suck, uh, so I just waited until I got to level 80. I, I basically just rushed to level 80. We're using the Albinoric Staff, which allows us to cast sorceries, but they scale m mainly with our Arcane Stat instead of our Intelligence Stat. Currently, we have just enough Intelligence to cast these spells, Carry and Piercer being the most expensive, I think at 27 intelligence. So I've got 22 intelligence and I'm wearing the uh, Stargazer Heirloom, which gives me plus five intelligence. So 22 intelligence plus five is 27, that's carry and piercer and that's all the intelligence that we need on this build. All of the, all the rest of my stats are just like strictly going into arcane. Um, now when I, I'm gonna keep leveling this build up but when I do, uh, I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be a lot of mind uh, and maybe a little bit more dex, probably some endurance. I've already got 60 vigor, so we're already good there. But, um, I, you know, I've, I've got some little trinkets and baubles that I'm gonna do with this build. But this is like the version of the build that is the most like. You know, this is as early as it can be done. It's done at level 80. And, uh, you know, works pretty good. Keep in mind that the Albinork Mask is giving us, it is giving us like four extra arcane, which is nice. Um, and this, I named the character Punished Glenn. Since my other frog character is Glenn of Guardia, I named this one Punished Glenn. Like, he's he's the the Glenn who's stuck in the in the bad timeline you know so he's he's punished Glenn um, but yeah so we've got that plus four Albinoric uh, mask arcane and that's nice um, and we're just sort of uh, you know 
goofing off at level 80. And these spells are not great at level 80, but uh, they're not bad at all. As you can see, 410 damage on a dang uh, gavel of Hyma, that's pretty good. I'm also using Millicent's Prosthesis on this build. It gives me 5 decks, which isn't much, but uh, I'm also using the uh, Radigan's uh, Talisman, the uh, Radigan's Icon. And that allows me to cast spells faster. Your dex allows you to cast spells faster. So the Millicent Prosthesis has given us the dex, but more importantly, it also gives us a buff on like multi-hit uh, stuff. So you know, if we hit somebody, we with the Gavel of Hyma, for example, um, we get a buff for that, and that's nice. It increases our AR even on our spells. So I'm using that to uh, I'm using that to do more damage as well as uh, the... I think I have the, the, the Graven Talisman. I don't have the Graven Mass Talisman. I don't have the good one. I have the mediocre one. I have the, the first one you can get uh, for these invasions. Um, obviously, I'll go get the good one. But uh, that can also give us some extra damage on our spells as well. So, like, the spells aren't great but you know they're not terrible they'll be better but uh but right now they just kind of are you know a little mediocre but it's okay we're still doing a lot of damage uh you know after we hit gavel of Hyma, we get that buff where we start doing more damage um you know for i forget how long it is it's like four seconds or five seconds or something and is if we hit someone again then you know we get to maintain that buff uh, so it'll stick around for a little bit and you know th this build just needs more damage and that does that for us so weapons wise I've got the uh, Lord Sworn straight sword because of course I do I'm Saint Riot hello uh, I've also got the serpent bow because we're an arcane build so why not use that um, and I've got an occult clayman's harpoon uh, that I will pull out every once in a while but for the most part it's just the Lord Sworn straight sword and the Albanoric Staff, and that's about it. Um, I've also got a shield so that we can do parries, but uh, that's that's a pretty standard uh, thing, you know. As you can see there, I missed that carry and piercer. They dodged it, but because of the way latency works, um, it still hit on my screen, which means I still got the benefit of that buff. Uh, the buff still procced on the carry and piercer, which that was nice. Um, and it, you can see that it procs on heavy attacks as well. Uh, and yeah, anything to get my damage up here is great. The uh, Chilling Mist, that's also... This weapon is magic infused, which we have so much arcane, it would probably be better to do some sort of arcane infusion. Um, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that just yet. But Chilling Mist giving us, uh, you know, the ability to frostbite and if we proc Frostbite, our opponents are going to take more damage. So, um, you know, that seemed like a no-brainer. Also, the Chilling Mist Ash of War has a little bit of hyper armor on it, which is nice for, for a straight sword to have, right? Um, Spell-wise, these are all the spells that I that I just really enjoy having. Uh, Carrion Greatsword, Carrion Slicer, Gavel of Hyma, Carrion Piercer, uh... Ga Cannon of Hyma, as well as Gavel, and then the Oracle Bubbles and the Great Oracular Bubble, and I've got Gravity Well. Eventually, I will I will replace Gravity Well. <laughs> Look at that dummy. Um, I will replace Gravity Well with Collapsing Stars, um, but I just didn't have the intelligence for it at the moment. But uh, you know, we'll get there eventually. But using the gravity well to pull people into um, the stars, or I'm sorry, using gravity well to pull people into the bubbles, uh, that's, a, that's a funny thing that can work uh, quite often. These bubble spells that y'all wanted me to play with, um, like I said, I made a video during, about the network test bubbles, and I jokingly was like, oh, they're so OP. Um, they can do damage... And they have hit stun, but they are so hard to hit anybody with 
that like you're just out of your mind if you use these things. Um, they can do some funny stuff. Don't get me wrong. In a in a in a confined area, they can they can have decent tracking. They can follow your opponent. Um, but my experience, more often than not, is the stupid bubble pops on the ground um, before it hits anybody. Uh, there might be some sort of like trick to free aiming and then locking on at the last minute. Um, I've been messing around with it a little bit, but I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But just casting the bubble and hoping for the best um, very rarely will work out in your favor. Uh, but it's when it does, it's funny, right? And that's that's why I play these games. Um, it's because it's funny to do PvP in these games. It's just a good time as long as you, you know. It, well, as long as I don't get uptight about it and try and take it too seriously, uh, I, I typically have a good time. Um, a, a lot of the time, my opponent is just either too afraid to get hit by bubbles, um, or we're just in a wide open area, you know, and the bubbles tracking just kind of sucks. It's nice this, you know, like this bridge would be a good spot, but unfortunately, I cast the bubble and my opponent immediately killed themselves. Have you ever seen those, uh, those bumper stickers they have on cars? that say like if you honk at me I will kill myself it's like if you cast a bubble at me I will kill myself and then he jumps off a bridge it's just calm down bud um, it's not <laughs> it's not that deep uh, yeah anyway the, the bubble spells suck is what I'm getting at am I does am I going to stop playing with this build because they suck obviously not of course not no I'm going to play with this build even more now <laughs> Um, so what level will I take this build up to? Like, what will the end result be? Uh, who can say? Who can say? Who really knows? Um, my Faith Arcane build, I think, ended up being, like, level 160. And I really liked that, because you can invade the 150 gankers, as well as the 200 co-opers. And it's a lot of fun. I really like that level. Um... I, just for the purposes, you know, because it's good, and just for the symmetry of the characters, since they, they, they are sort of like opposite versions of the same build, I might put this one at the same level range. Uh, but as you can see here, um, you know, the build's pretty much done at level 80. And if you were just, for some reason, obsessed with making this build better, uh, you probably could by just giving yourself like the the least amount of arcane possible uh, and then going all in on intelligence and then using a better catalyst I think that might work better uh, I am you know not about that I'm about uh, being an idiot right um, so that's what I'll do but I, maybe it would work if you are just obsessed you see this video and you're like oh my god I have to cast bubbles after seeing this. This has changed in something in me. Something has awoken in me. And I must do this now. Um, but you want it to be better. Uh, maybe try that version of it, I guess. Go all intelligence and as little arcane as you can get away with for the bubble spells. Uh, and that might work better. Look at the tracking on this stupid bubble. It's terrible, right? And you're like, God, it's painful to watch you take this long to kill this guy. Um, I don't know what to tell you there. You just got to get used to it. If you expect me to do anything, like take these people seriously, you're out of your mind. But eventually that happens. Did you see that? Eventually that happens. And now what? That's the funniest thing in the world. That man was terrified of a bubble and it killed him. He got bubbled in the back. That's its own insane funny thing just you know wow now that I've explained what's wrong with the bubbles and thus you know like fundamentally what's wrong with this build uh, allow me to say what I like about it and that is that it's just a build that I already made that I love to death um, 
and now it just has an extra spell on it that sucks. And that's okay. It also has a spell on it that's better. Um, you're not seeing it in any of these invasions because I didn't have it yet. But uh, I also put um, I also put Star Shower on this build, which uh, it's annoying, and I it, like it, it's just a pain in the ass. Um, and I rarely use it. I the, about the only I, I have it on the build, and about the only people I ever use it on are people who are just super passive and don't engage. It's like. Uh, you know, I can either cast Bubbles or I can cast Star Shower. It's it's just sort of up to my opponent, right? Um, I, I don't use it that often, but, uh, you know, I do have it. And um, this invasion right here, I think, is the one that convinced me that I should have it. Uh, the constant throwing stuff at me... Um, and and the moon veil and this guy also had like the claws uh, and the running attack um, and then when he didn't have a friend he would just run away forever and like I kill his friend and then a blue shows up and then I kill a friend and then a blue shows up and he gets his friend back and yada yada or whatever you know just this type of invasion. I, I, I'm in my head. I'm probably combining like two or three different invasions that happen, and I'm turning them into one thing. But, but that that was. I was like, okay, you know what? I've got a spell slot open that I'm just currently not doing anything with. Um, the the faith version of this build uh, used every spell slot that you could have. Um, and, and honestly, like I could have, I could have used more. It wouldn't have hurt my feelings if I was able to have more spell slots. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, well, I should do the same thing with this build. Um, did I say claws? I'm sorry, I meant daggers. I was like, I should do the same thing with this build. I should just use every possible spell slot. And so that's what I've done. Um, every possible spell slot is in effect. And, uh, so I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, what do I want to do with these last two spell slots? And in my head, I already know one of them is going to be, uh, what do you call it? Um, Night Maiden's Mist. I love Night Maiden's Mist. Uh, the other one, I was like, you know, it, it can sort of just be whatever. And so I was like, all right, you know what, for that last one, I'll do Star Shower. Carrion Slicer and Star Shower is, uh a crazy good combo. Um, add Carrion Piercer into that, and like, that's pretty much all you need um, with regards to being a mage. But, um, you know, uh, it's nice to have that. It's nice to have good spells for, um, you know, when you want to cast bubbles at people and they're just not having it. You know, I get it. They're terrifying. You would rather run into that lightning ball than face down that bubble. You know, that's your right. Uh, and not only is it your right, your right to do it. Because that bubble is more dangerous than that lightning ball. You can run from the bubble, you know. You can, you can try and interrupt the bubble. But the bubble's coming. The bubble's coming. And you can try and pull out your moon veil if you want to. But uh, somebody somebody was watching me stream using the bubbles, and they said, they said, uh, Inshallah, he shall be pop. And that's it. That's what's happening. So you better just get used to it. You shall be popped. Lots of, uh, I call those little lightning balls, I call those the legends of PvP. Because that's what a real PvP legend looks like. Those lightning balls are, I mean, damn near undefeated when it comes to PvP. No human opponent has ever killed one of those lightning balls. So they have a kill-death ratio 
of like, you know, probably like 10 million to zero. That's, that's, they are the legends of PvP. The only thing, you know, like, that comes close. Nothing, nothing is as good as these things. Nothing is as good as these things. The only thing that comes close is, like, the high page and the perfumers in, uh, the Lindell Capital. I call that the Hell Room. Um, they're good, but they're no balls of lightning. Uh, and there's a few others. Did you see that nice little delay right there in the Manzar 1s? That was nice. A little bit of a Dark Souls 3 callback, it looked like, with the, the staggered R1. Um, I just saved his life right there, you know? And I don't think he knows that. I, I, I was, I remember when I got that backstab, um, I said, I just saved your life. <laughs> I didn't want him to die to the balls of lightning. I wanted him to die to the bubbles like that. Look at that. Oh, I guess I sh that's another thing I should talk about. The big bubble will true combo into stuff. Um, and that's cool. Uh, you can true combo the big bubble into um, uh, a straight sword R1. Uh, it, but the thing about it is like you can true combo it into anything if you know when the bubble is going to hit. You know? Does that make sense? Do you see how he just woke up uh, attacking? That's rare. You don't see that uh, a lot. He gave up his get up iframes to attack. And I was like, that was interesting. You don't see people do that a lot. And I remember, you know, like it, it stuck with me. Look at the, look at him. He's playing pretty good there, right? Um, but since he's willing to give up his iframes, uh, you know, it, it, it got me thinking. Carrying greatsword, uh, you know, it, it's, it's tough as a wake up, but it is usable. Boom. Look at that. That time he didn't give up his iframes. Uh, he, he went for the safety roll. Um, and we just managed to time the Carrion Greatsword correctly. Uh, which is something... I, I made a video about it. Or I've made a video where I talked about it before. It wasn't, you know, entirely about that. But um, it was a thing that I was like actively like, okay, I'm going to practice and work on this and see if I can get better at it. Trying to... Um, use carrying greatsword as a wake up because you basically want to be casting it as they're burning their safety roll because the iframes on the safety roll are infinite uh, for as long as that safety roll is taking place there can be no damage so you basically want carrying greatsword to hit at the end of that safety roll before a second roll can start um and, you know, that takes practice to get the hang of when that's going to happen. And then mix latency into that conversation. And, you know, good luck. Just good luck trying to get it. But it can be got. We have here the, the Radon Bloodhound Fang Blue, whom we all love. Uh, the range on his weapon scales inversely with his skill at the game you all know I'm right um, it's just the way Bloodhound Fang works in this game somehow it's honestly insane that From Software found a way to make that happen uh, where the length of the Bloodhound F Fang scales inversely with the skill of the player using it but you know good for them I guess Another thing that I've been doing, and I don't know that I've shown it off yet, uh, but another thing that I've been playing around with is casting carry and greatsword twice. It's it's crazy. In PvE, it's absurd how well that works. Um, just cast carry and greatsword over and over and over again, and for some reason, nothing can hit you while you do it. Uh, in PvP, things can hit you, but the difference is um, a lot of times people will roll away from it and then roll back into it. Uh, and it has a little hitch in its step. You know? A little hitch in its cast. And that little hitch that it has in its cast right there um, 
it, people just get hit by that second one more than they do that first one. Big bubble. Big bubble pop right there. Feels good, right? Feels good. I actually have a little clip uh, that I guess I could show you guys at the end of this video. Um, it's me versus uh, a tree sentinel. And uh, I just I just cast Carrying Greatsword like six times. And the tree sentinel could not hit me. He was trying. But just nothing would touch me. And, um... Yeah. I, I just was absolutely shocked and blown away. I cast it like five times. And it worked every time. I tried really hard. But he, I, I, I checked it. I checked it out in slow motion. Uh, I, I tried to, you know, force him into the bubbles with the gravity well. But, uh, you know, I, I checked. He got hit by gravity well. He didn't get hit by the bubbles, which is sad. But that's what I'm saying. These bubbles are hard to hit people with. But I'm going to keep trying. Also, fingers crossed that they give us another bubble spell in the DLC. Because we could definitely use more than two. That would be nice. Um, yeah. Seeing as how this is an arcane build, um, I'm probably going to do some shenanigans with the... Uh, I'm going to do some shenanigans with the Ashes of War and stuff that I use, um, as well as the weapon infusions. We'll see how that ends up being. Um, I already have some ideas of where I think this build might go, but I'm not sure that that's where it will stay. Right? And I don't want to give it away. I don't want to spoil it. So I'll just wait. Um... You know, I'm not going to say anything, but I'll, I'll have another video about this build uh, very soon. And uh, I hope you look forward to that. I hope you love watching me cast these bubbles. Look at them. Just floating, not doing anything. Pop. <laughs> the gavel into the greatsword works beautifully into the R1s. And then you can follow that up with Carry and Piercer. Uh, Gavel, Greatsword, R1, Piercer. is uh, That's a brutal combo. And, and if, if it hits, man, it's, it's over. It's, it's pretty easy to avoid. But if you hit with that Gavel, it's easy for your opponent to panic. And get hit by, you know, stuff that they typically wouldn't get hit by. Any, any attack that knocks an opponent down... Um, will make them rethink things, right? Uh, a lot of opponents don't respect your damage. Um, this was especially true back when poise, passive poise, was better. Um, back when passive poise was better, players wouldn't respect your damage until you knocked them down uh, or launched them into the air. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not saying that that's completely gone away, because it has. Like, it, it hasn't. It still exists. Some players will still just not respect anything you do, unless you knock them down, um, or launch them into the air. But once you knock them down, or launch them into the air, whichever, uh, they start making mistakes. And you get moments like that, where they just start rolling and panicking, and, you know... You get to do cool combos. Anyway, that's the video. Have more soon. Thanks for watching. Later, y'all.